Evolution is the most well-supported scientific theory ever devised. There's more evidence supporting the idea of speciation via natural selection than there is evidence for the theory of gravity. Evolution is the bedrock of modern biology, and yet, even though there's ample evidence already, it's always exciting to find something new that clearly shows a connection with its ancestors and its evolutionary cousins. These kinds of discoveries, be they morphologically similar fossils or chemically related proteins or genes, they're all a visceral representation of the deep interrelatedness of all life. They're all evidence of our common origin and our shared evolutionary legacy. So the news that I bring you today is about a fossilized fish found in Canada, which was described by scientists from the Flinders University in Australia and the Université du Québec à Rimouski in Canada. Their work has been published in the journal Nature. Now, this ancient fish belonged to a group known as the Alpistostegallians, which lived in the Middle and Upper Devonian about 393 to 359 million years ago. These Alpistostegallians are not new to science. In 1938, part of a skull was found in the fossiliferous cliffs of Miguasha National Park in Quebec. And at the time, it was thought to belong to a species of land-dwelling tetrapod. But then, in 1985, another part of the skull was found, and it was revealed to be a lobe-finned fish. A complete skeleton of the Alpistostegi was only found in 2010, and after it was excavated, it was subjected to years of scans, analysis, and study. From this study, we learned that Alpistostegi was a large, predatory fish that lived in a shallow, muddy coastal marine habitat in what is now Quebec, about 380 million years ago. In their estuarial habitat, they were a dominant predator, using their large teeth to hunt and capture prey. As these kinds of lobed fin fish scuttled across the muddy ground, they began to evolve rudimentary arms and legs, and hands and feet. Now, the study in question involved a high-energy CT scan of the Alpistostegian fish's arm skeleton, or the skeleton of its pectoral fin lobe. This uncovered an atavistic humerus in the upper arm, a radius and an ulna in the lower arm, rows of carpus bones that form the wrist, and the phalanges that make up the fingers. As you'll soon learn, these newly uncovered anatomical details have huge implications. Dr. John Long is a professor in paleontology at Flinders University, and he was a leader of the research team. Dr. Long said, quote, Today, we announce in the journal Nature our discovery of a complete specimen of a tetrapod-like fish called Elpistostegi, which reveals extraordinary new information about the evolution of the vertebrate hand. This is the first time that we have unequivocally discovered fingers locked in a fin with fin rays in any known fish. The articulating digits in the fin are like the finger bones found in the hands of most animals. This finding pushes back the origins of digits and vertebrates to the fish level, and tells us that the patterning for the vertebrate hand was first developed deep in evolution, just before the fishes left the water." Co-author of the paper, Richard Claudier from the Université du Québec à Rimouski, said, quote, "...the origin of digits relates to developing the capability for the fish to support its weight in the shallow water or for short trips out on land. The increased number of small bones in the fin allows more planes of flexibility to spread out its weight through the fin. The other features the study revealed concern the structure of the upper arm bone, or humerus, which also shows features present that are shared with early amphibians. Elpistostegi is not necessarily our ancestor, but it is the closest we can get to a true transitional fossil, an intermediate between fishes and tetrapods." Unquote. All right, so this is big. It's super cool. What they're saying they found is, basically, an ancient fish that represents a critical evolutionary middle ground on the path towards becoming land-dwelling tetrapods, and they have the bone structures in their hands and arms to prove it. It's a fantastically interesting example of a huge evolutionary transition, when fish became amphibians and brought tetrapod life to the terrestrial surface of the Earth. These are the kinds of evolutionary transitions that can define the life and the ecology across an entire planet for hundreds of millions of years.